want to talk to you about this book I've been creating off and on since 2016. It's not just an artist book full of mark making and weird little drawings, but a reflection of experiences, memories, and records of how I felt and what I discovered during my solo traveling trips to the maritime provinces in Canada. I started my summer trips in 2016, and I returned two times after that. I traveled through New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia each time. I never made it to Newfoundland, but maybe one day. Traveling is really important to me, not just as an artist, but as a human, because every day my life is just so busy and I have to focus on taking care of other things and other people. So having the ability to travel alone allows me to recenter and refocus and recharge. I do a lot of dreaming during this time and I don't try to force myself to create if nothing is manifesting because all the time I'm traveling, I am initializing a cultivation of process that will manifest into product or a project later on that will allow me to communicate my experiences. Sometimes those paintings or drawings or constructions that occur afterwards happen immediately. And sometimes I need time to process. Time is a really interesting concept and in many ways, I consider it as a type of mark-making method. I think it was the artist Paul Clay who said, line is a dot that went for a walk. <laughs> and we are that dot standing in the present. And when we travel forward into the unknown adventure, in that moment, time itself, in its essence, becomes line. So that's what I want to share in regards to this book is it's a record of mark making representing time through my experiences. And I also want to share some sound drawings as well as some other visuals and, and stories that I feel work well together with this book as a whole. I've created a whole series of work based on my visual experiences from these trips and I call these constructions. Now, I'm not going to be talking about these in my video, but if you're interested, please feel free to click on the constructions page on my website after this video presentation and I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box below. Okay, so Let's talk about this book. I found this album in a really crowded antique curiosity shop in Richmond, Virginia around 2008, 2009, and I immediately connected to it. Red is my favorite color, and it was partially hidden in a case with a bunch of old photo cards on top of it. And I happened to see the red peeking through. And um, I said to the clerk, oh, can I see that? You know, he didn't even have a price for it because it had just been so discarded. Um, so I got a really good deal. But um, it, it just was a really exciting find. And at the time I had no plan for it right away. I was in a bit of an artistic slump. So I put it in a box and I, I stored it for a while until I was ready to explore with it. Um, the, the pages have um, throughout the album, they're torn and they have tape. And this was the actual condition of the album at time of purchase. Now, I know basic book, book repair, like really basic. And I know how to fix pages to make them look a certain way. But um, I didn't want to break the integrity of the pages and the album. Um, I want to still regain what I first uh, saw about that album and, and um, the beauty in those torn pages. So I thought I'd go ahead and just leave it alone and allow myself to work within the, um, the current format for my drawings. And every time I saw 
a new page um, with a new piece of tape or a little tear I thought about that person who had laid down the tape in the past or or who had accidentally ripped that page and I, I thought about the story and the history and, and um, I, I didn't want to erase that you know um, talking about details like that is really exciting to me because process is really important and when you're work especially when you're working on a project like this it's it's all about intentionality you know um because you're you're taking something that someone has already started and you're making decisions on how to manipulate and how to cultivate what you're going to keep and what you're going to leave alone so um like i was just starting to say process is just so important to me it's not just about product um it's about creating that continued narrative and it's part of that active engagement with the album. Mark making is a bit of a broad term. It describes different lines and patterns and visual textures that are used. And it's an active energy and it, it's communicating what is being manifested. For me, it's very much a language. And when I was a child and learning to write in cursive, the teacher would say that I was drawing my writing as opposed to writing my words. And I think that's really true about the way I use mark making. I'm telling a story through my marks. And you can start at any point in the page and get to the same conclusion. I think it's really important for artists to feel like they do have a voice and mark making is one of those ways that I can speak very loudly or whisper and I still have a sense of power in what I am cultivating. So in this book, I have portraits of rocks and these rocks are Rocks that I discovered on my many walks on the rocky beaches of New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island in Nova Scotia. Now, my first trip was in 2016 and I collected a whole bunch of rocks. And when I was in Prince Edward Island, I found a ton of sea glass, which was really precious, you know. And I always had an intention to return for another trip. And um, when I returned, in 2018 i was talking to someone about collecting rocks and they posed a question um what would the beaches look like if everyone picked up rocks and took them away now i get that this is a little bit of an inflated question because there are so many rocks on those beaches that we as humans couldn't take all the rocks but then again, maybe we could because we tend to destroy um, what doesn't seem like it could be destroyed. But I, it made me think about the preciousness of the find and what makes us pick out certain rocks as opposed to discarding the one that's right next to it. So in 2019, I went to the various places that I had been to in 2016 and 18 and I returned as many rocks in the original locations as possible. Now, I didn't do a lot of documentation on this because the process was very personal um, to me. Um, and because I knew that there would be storytelling as part of this process later on down the road when I was ready. And I knew, so I knew I would have that opportunity. So when you watch the book flip through section of this video, you can see where I've typed out the location of where I found the rock and how I returned it. Sometimes it was in uh, the same place and sometimes it was somewhere different. Now, one place that was really mesmerizing to me was Cape Enrage in um, New Brunswick. I went there for the first time in 2016. Um, I had no destination and I just drove and at some point I stopped having a paved road and it was a dirt road and, and then I came across the most angry, stormy, dramatic beach scene I had ever witnessed. And I, I didn't know where I was going and where I was at the time and there was no one else there and I got out of my car and the wind was so fierce and so severe I started crying immediately and I cried 
<laughs> all the way down the beach uh, to the water. Uh, I was absolutely hypnotized by the incredible power of that such a landscape was portraying. Um, if I remember correctly, I had, I had just gotten a fairly disappointing communication and my heart was hurting so much at that moment and the landscape was truly manifesting all of the emotions, love, hate, sadness, passion, despair that I was feeling all at once. And it was truly an incredible, incredible experience. And I, I went back to that Cape, um, to Cape and Rage every trip that I took. Um, and on the third trip, I actually drove up to the lighthouse and it was really incredible. All three times I went to the Cape, it was always the most dramatic. I never went when the sky was blue. In fact, um, when I was driving uh, to Cape and Rage in 2019 was my last trip and the skies were absolutely gorgeous. And I was in Ulma and I drove through Ulma, which is the town before the Cape, and the weather was gorgeous. And the closer I got to the Cape, as soon as I got out of town, the weather changed and it got colder and it got cloudy and there was a mist in the air. And I just knew at that point that that was the experience I was always meant to have at Cape in Range. And it was a place of cleansing and reflection and meditating on sorrow and loss. And it was an incredibly powerful experience. Of all the rocks, that I returned during my trip, there was one rock that I absolutely could not return. And it is the rock that I travel with. It stays in my car. I've taken it on all three trips. And I remember on my last trip, standing on the beach in the Cape, holding the rock in my hand, unable to let go of this rock. And it became a symbol of something really important to me. And I knew I couldn't part with it. So I sat down as comfortably as I could on those rocky beaches and I had a good cry and I held the rock in my hand and there was a releasing uh, also a sense of receiving and it was a really beautiful incredible wonderful moment and through that rock experience I learned that you can let go and still receive at the same time Strength and success, solid as a rock. Strength and success, solid as a rock. In strength and stability, solid as a rock. Enduring stability, hard versatility. Will this rock give me love? Will this rock give me hope? Will this rock give me peace? If I hold it in my hand, will I find who I am? Enduring stability, hard versatility,
in the morning I would make my coffee and walk down the cliff spilling my hot coffee on my hands as I descended. The trail was really narrow and there were raspberries along the way and I would pick them and eat them. And the air had this gorgeous scent of wild roses. <laughs> I never wore the right shoes and my sandals flipped and flopped and slipped off my feet as I walked quickly across the rocky beach. Pebble, pebble in my shoe, rock, rock under my feet. Pebble, pebble in my shoe, rock, rock, pebble, rock, rock under my feet. Pebble, pebble in my shoe, rock, rock, pebble, rock, rock under my feet. During low tide, I went out far across the beach onto one of the, quote, islands. The sun was so hot that day, but so wonderfully so. There were remnants of campers in that area from long ago. I took off my dress and sunbathed and my head rested on a piece of driftwood. I was laying on my stomach and I felt the intense heat against my back. And when I turned over, the soft, gravelly pebble stayed, embedded in my skin across my chest and belly. And it was so peaceful and wonderful in that moment. There was a hawk in the sky, and I remember catching myself from drifting asleep. And the driftwood that I rested my head on, I used that as part of my offering.
There was a chapel of pine trees, a sanctuary of birch. There was bird songs of memories and visions of coastal longings. It had stormed the night before, and the sky was still gray and stormy and ominous. The tide was rushing in or out. I couldn't tell, and there was sea foam everywhere. The landscape was absolutely otherworldly, and I felt so afraid and lonely in the vastness of the angry space I had invaded. At one point, I slipped and fell into the rushing waters, and for a moment I panicked. I was disoriented. I felt myself moving, and I feared I would be taken out into the ocean. But I held on to some rocks, and I felt my body weigh itself down against the moving sand, and I realized I could get up and walk away. And I did. So that was my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed making it. Um, it's been a very long process and it's so fun to see everything come together. And, and um, I hope you enjoyed the stories and the videos and I hope that it inspires you to make your own artist book and see um, what you can find in the world and the experiences around you. Okay, until next time. <laughs>